Okay guys, today we're gonna learn about the pharyngeal arteries and the muscle originated from them. So first of all, we will see that the muscle originated from the first pharyngeal arch. These muscles are helping during the mastication. So we call them mastication muscles in which first of all here we go to the very big one. It is called the temporalis muscle. Another one, the master muscle and the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles. So these four muscles help to do the mastication process and they originated from the first pharyngeal arch. So they innervated by the branch from the trigeminal nerve. Now we come to the second pharyngeal arch. In the second pharyngeal arch, we are having the facial expression muscles originated from that. And uh, these all muscles from the second pharyngeal arch innervated by the branch from the facial nerves, which one is the number seven cranial nerve. Let's begin these groups of muscles around the orbit, or we can say that around the eye. We got here the very large muscle we call that orbicularis oculi muscle. The second muscle deeply corrugator superciliary. Orbicularis oculi is having the two parts, orbital part and palpebral part. Orbital part and palpebral part. Orbital part help the eyes to close forcefully and palpebral help the eyes to close gently. Corrugator superciliary, when it contract, it cause the wrinkles vertically. Now we are going to the nasal group, the muscles from our nose, in which we got the three group, three muscles. The first one, nasalis, which one is the largest. It go the two parts, the transfer part and the alert part. The transfer part help to flare the nasal, and the alert part help to dilate the nostril. The second muscle we got here that is the procerus which contract and cause the horizontal wrinkle at the root of the nose the very small muscle at the septum here okay we call that depressor septum nasi okay it also help to depress and dilate the nostril now we are coming to the oral group oral group muscles First of all that around the oral orifice, we got here circular muscle, we call that orbicularis oris, its fibers are running around, okay, it helps to close the mouth, okay, and open the mouth. We can divide <coughs> the muscles into the upper and the lower group, okay, I will come back to there. And there is a muscle here that is present in the cheeks, okay, as you can see at this place that this is called the proxenator muscle and you can see that the duct of the parotid gland is uh, passing through here and going to the oral cavity opposite to the second upper molar tube. So orbicularis oris and boxinator. Now I'm going to the lower group of the oral cavity. At this place that we got here the muscle coming from the angle of the mouth to downside we call that depressor anguli oris depressor anguli oris another one is coming the fibers downward from the lips we call that depressor libia inferioris depressor libia inferioris another one here we got the mentalis mentalis so we go the three muscles in the lower group depressor anguli Oris, depressor libia inferioris, and the mentalis. Now we are coming to the upper group. In the upper group, there is a muscle should present here. We call that rhizorius. After that, these two muscles are attaching at the zygomatic process and coming down what we call that zygomatics major and the minor respectively. They are the smiling muscle, okay? They help to produce the smiling expression on the face. We got here, levator, libiae, 
superior is muscle. We got here levator anguli oris. We got here levator libe superioris alekinesi. Going toward that place. Except that we got the muscles around the ear. We call them auricular muscles, in which both the anterior, superior, and the posterior auricular muscle. Okay. And the last muscle from the others we got <coughs> in the superficial fascia at the neck that will be present here in the superficial fascia, which is not present in this specimen, we call that platysma. And another muscle that is also originating from the uh, seventh <coughs> is originating from the second pharyngeal arch but innervated by the seventh cranial nerve. That is a very important muscle of the scalp. We got here occipital frontalis muscle is aponeurosis is making the layer of the scalp. So here we got the occipital frontalis muscle. Okay, thank you very much.